be right back. Ladies.
whole place. Oh, what am I saying? I didn't mean to say that. I meant to be nice about it and say, oh, what a convenient location and <laughs> Oh, precious lamb. You haven't said a word to me. Oh, you haven't given me a chance to, honey. Mm, well, now you talk. You open your pretty mouth and talk while I look around for some liquor. I know you must have some liquor on the place, but where could it be, I wonder? Oh, oh I spy. I spy. Blanche, Blanche, you sit down and let me pour the drinks. Uh, I don't know what we've got to mix with. Maybe a Coke in the refrigerator? Oh, no Coke, honey, not with my nerves tonight. Where, where is, oh, Stan? Bowling, he loves it. He's having a, uh, uh, oh, found some soda. A tournament. Just water, baby, to chase in. Now don't get worried. <coughs> Your sister hasn't turned into a drunkard. She's just all shaken up and hot and tired and dirty. Now you, sit down and explain this place to me. What on earth are you doing in a place like this? Now, Blanche. Well, I'm not going to be hypocritical. I'm going to be honestly critical. Never, <laughs> never, never in my worst dreams could I have pictured only Poe. Only Mr. Edgar Allan Poe could do it justice. <laughs> and out there, I suppose, is the ghoul-haunted woodland of Weir. No, honey, those are the streetcar tracks. Now seriously, putting joking aside, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you write me? Honey, why didn't you let me know? Tell you what, Blanche? Why, that you had to live in these <coughs> conditions. Aren't you being a little intense about it? It's not that bad at all. New Orleans isn't like other cities. This has nothing to do with New Orleans. You might as well say, Give me blessed baby. The subject is closed. Thanks. You're all I've got in the world and you're not glad to see me. I Blanche, you know that's not true. No. I've forgotten how quiet you are. Well, you never did give me a chance to say much, so I just got in the habit of being quiet around you. Well, that's a good habit to get into. <laughs> You haven't asked me yet how I happened to get away from the school before the spring term ended. Thought you'd volunteer that information if you wanted to tell me. You thought I'd been fired? Why, of course not. No, I, I thought you might have um, resigned. Or, or I was something. so exhausted. After all I've been through, my nerves just broke. I was on the verge of lunacy almost. So Mr. Graves, Mr. Graves is the high school superintendent. He suggested I take a leave of absence. I could have put all those details in the message. Oh, this buzzes through me and feels so good. Oh, will you have another? No, one's my limit. <laughs> Are you sure? You haven't said a word about my appearance. You look just fine. God love you for a liar. Daylight never exposed, so total a ruin. But you, you put on some weight. Yes, you are just plump as a little partridge. <laughs> oh, and it is so becoming to you. Now, Blanche. Well, it is, it is, or I wouldn't say it. You just have to watch a little around the hips. Can I stand up? Well, not now. Well, you hear me, I say stand up. Messy child, you spilled something on that pretty white lace collar. And about your hair, oh, you really ought to have it cut in a feather bob with your dainty features. Stella, you have a maid, don't you? No, with only two rooms. What? Two rooms, did you say? <laughs> yes, there's this one. And, uh, and the other one. <laughs> well, I'm just going to have one tiny little net more. I put the stopper on, so to speak. Oh. And then put the bottle away. Put it away so I won't be tempted. I want you to take a look at my figure. I haven't put on one ounce in 
ten years. I wait now, but I wait the summer you left, Valerie. The summer Dad died and you left us. It's just incredible, Blanche. How well you're looking. There are only two rooms. Stella, I don't understand where you're going to put me. Oh, we're going to put you right here. What kind of bed's this? One of those collapsible things. Does it feel all right? <laughs> Wonderful, honey. I don't like a bed that gives much. But Stella, there are only these curtains between the rooms. Stanley, will it be decent? Stanley's Polish, you know. <laughs> That's something like Irish, isn't it? <laughs> well, well. I brought some nice clothes to meet all your lovely friends in. Ooh, I'm afraid you won't think they're lovely. Well, what are they like? They're Stanley's friends. Pollocks. They're a mixed lot. Mm, heterogeneous. Types. Oh, yes, yes, types is right. <laughs> well, I brought some nice clothes and I'll wear them. I bet you're hoping I'll say I'll put up in a hotel. Well, I won't put up in a hotel. I want to be near you, Stella. I've got to be with people. I can't be alone. Because as you must have noticed, I am not very well. You do seem sort of nervous or <laughs> overwrought or something. Will Stanley like me? Or will I just be a visiting in-law? Oh, I couldn't stand that, Stella. You'll get along fine together. If you'll just try not to... Compare him with the men we went out with at home. Is he so different? Mm, a different species. Hmm. In what way? What's he like? Oh, you can't describe someone you're in love with. Here's a picture of him. Ooh, an officer. Mm, the master sergeant in the engineer corps. Uh, those are decorations. Mm, you must have had those on when you met him. I assure you, I wasn't just blinded by all the brass, though there were some things to adjust myself to later on. Such as his civilian background. How did you take it when you told him I was coming? Oh, Stanley doesn't know yet. You haven't told him? Oh, he's on the road a good deal. Oh, he so. travels. Yes. Oh, good. I mean, isn't it? Well, I can hardly stand it when he's away for a night. Why, Stella? And when he's away for a week, I nearly go wild. Gracious! And then when he comes home, I cry on his lap like a little baby. Well, I guess that's what is meant by being in love. <laughs> oh, Stella, hmm? I haven't asked you all the things you probably thought I was going to ask you, so... I expect you to be understanding about what I have to tell you. What, Blanche? You're going to reproach me. I know you're bound to reproach me, but before you do, take into consideration you left. I stayed and struggled. You came to New Orleans to look after yourself. I stayed at Bell Reef and tried to hold it together. I'm not meaning this in any kind of reproachful way, but all the burden descended on my shoulders. The best I could do was make my own living, Blanche. I know. I know, but you are the one who abandoned the bell reef, not I. I stayed and fought for it, bled for it, almost died for it. Stop this hysterical outburst and tell me what you mean. Oh, well, I knew Sorry, you would, Stella. I knew you would take this attitude about it. About what? Well, the loss. The loss. Bell reef. Lost, is it? Yes, Stella. Father, mother, Margaret, that dreadful. 
they're breathing is hoarse. Sometimes it rattles. Sometimes they cry out to you, don't let me go. Even the old sometimes say, don't let me go, as if you were able to stop them. Funerals are quiet, with pretty flowers, and oh, what gorgeous boxes they pack them away in. Unless you were there at the bed when they cried out, hold me. You'd never know there was a struggle for breath and bleeding. You didn't dream, but I saw, 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 and now you stand there telling me with your eyes that I let the place go. How in the hell do you think all that sickness and dying was paid for? Death is expensive, Miss Stella. And old cousin Jesse, after Margaret's hers, why, the Grim Reaper had put up his tent on our doorstep. Stella Bell Reeve was his headquarters. Honey, that's how it slipped through my fingers. Which of them left us a fortune? Which of them left us a cent of insurance even? Only poor Jessie, one thousand to pay for her coffin. That was all, Stella. And I, with my pitiful salary at the school. Yes, accuse me. Stand there thinking I let the place go. I let the place go. Well, where were you? In bed with your Polak. Blanche, you be still, that is enough. Where are you going? Going to the bathroom to wash my face. Oh, Stella, you're crying. Oh, surprise you. Is that how we got it? Sure, that's how we got it. He had the old Whataburg for 300 bucks on a six number ticket. Don't tell him those things, he'll believe it. Hey, Mitch, come back here. Hey, are we playing poker tomorrow? Uh, yeah, 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 at, at Mitch's. No, not at my place. My mother's sick. All right, all right, all right, at my place. Not okay. everyone. Hey, you bring the hey. beer. Hey. Unrefined type. 
fellow spoke you a good deal. You were married once, weren't you? Yes, when I was quite young. Oh yeah, what happened? The boy, the boy died. I'm going to be sick. later. 
But if you do now, she'll go to pieces again. I don't understand what happened to Belle Reeve, but you don't know how ridiculous you are being when you suggest that my sister, or I, or anyone else in our family could have perpetrated a swindle on anyone. Yeah, so uh, where's the money if the place was sold? Not sold, lost, lost. Open your eyes for one second. I think she got this out of a teacher's pay. <laughs> Look at all these feathers and furs. She come here to preen herself in. Oh, what's this? A solid gold dress, I believe. Stanley. Huh. And this one. And this one. Oh. And what do we have here? <laughs> fox pieces. <coughs> Genuine fox fur pieces, a half a mile long. Where are your fox pieces, Stella, huh? Bushy Snow White ones, no less. These are, Where are your fox pieces? These are inexpensive summer furs that Blanche has had a long time. Yeah, I got an acquaintance who deals in this kind of merchandise. He's coming up here to make an appraisal of this. Don't be such an idiot, Stanley. I bet you there's over $10,000 invested in that stuff there. Huh. And what's this? The treasure chest of a pirate? Stanley! Pearls! Ropes of a... What is this sister of yours, a deep sea diver? <laughs> bracelets of solid gold? Where are I'm your pearls leaving. and gold bracelets, Stella? And what's this? Diamonds? A crown for an empress. A rhinestone tiara she wore to a costume ball. That's rhinestone? Next door to glass. Aren't you kidding me? I got an acquaintance who works in a jewelry store. He's gonna make an appraisal of this. Here's your plantation, or what's left of it, here. You don't know how stupid and horrid you are being. Get away from that suitcase before she comes out of the bathroom. The Kowalskis and the Dubois have different notions. Indeed they have, thank heavens. I'm going on the porch. You come out with me while Blanche is getting dressed. Since when do you give me orders? You mean you're going to stay here and insult her? You're damn too, and I'm going to stay here. fingers. May I uh, have a drag on your cig? Have one for yourself, Blanche. Oh, thanks. It looks like my suitcase has exploded. <laughs> yeah, me and Stella are helping you unpack. Well, you certainly did a fast and thorough job of it. Looks like you raided some stylish shops in Paris. Yes, clothes are my passion. What's it cost for a string of her pieces like that? Oh, those were a tribute from an old admirer of mine. Is 
Must have had a lot of admiration. In my youth, I excited some admiration. But look at me now. Oh, would you think it possible that I was ever considered to be attractive? Your looks are okay. I was fishing for a compliment, Stanley. I don't go in for that stuff. What stuff? Compliments to women about their looks. Mm. I never met a woman who didn't know if she was good looking or not without being told. And some of them give themselves more credit than they've got. I once went out with this dame who said to me, I am the glamorous type. I am the glamorous type. I said, so what? <clears throat> what did she say then? She didn't say nothing. Shut her up like a clam. Did it end the romance? It ended the conversation. That was all. Some men are took in by this Hollywood glamour stuff, and some men are not. Ooh, I'm sure you belong in the second category. That's right. I cannot imagine any witch of a woman casting a spell over you. That's right. You're simple, <laughs> straightforward. Honest. A bit on the primitive side, I should think. To interest you, a woman would have to... Lay her cards on the table. Well, I never cared for wishy-washy people. That's why when you walked in here last night, I said to myself, Hmm, my sister has married a man. Of course, that was all I could tell about you at the moment. Oh, I have a cut in the rebound! and I are having a little talk. Oh, now, just a minute. Honey, do me a favor. Run to the drugstore and get me a lemon Coke with plenty of chipped ice in it. Would you do that for me, sweetie? Please? Yes, please. Poor little thing was out there listening to us. I have an idea she doesn't understand you as well as I do. All right then, Mr. Kowalski, let us proceed without any more digression. I'm ready to answer all questions. I've nothing to hide. What is it? In the state of Louisiana, we have what is known as the Napoleonic Code. Mm -hmm. According to which what belongs to the wife belongs to the husband, and vice versa. My? But you have an impressive judicial air. If I didn't know you was my wife's sister, I'd get ideas about you. Such as what? Don't play dumb. You know what. All right. Cards on the table. That suits me. I know I fib a good deal. After all, a woman's charm is 50% illusion. But when a thing's important, I tell the truth. And this is the truth. I have never cheated my sister, or you, or anyone else as long as I've lived. Where are the papers? In the suitcase? Well, everything I own is in that suitcase. What in the name of heaven are you thinking of? Oh, what's in the back of that little boy's mind of yours? Let me do that, it'll be faster and simpler. I keep my papers mostly in this box. Hey, hey, what's that underneath? Love letters. Yellowing with antiquity, all from one boy. Give those back to me. Yeah, I'll look at them. Pull the touch of your hands and salt. Oh, them. don't pull that stuff. Now you touch them, I'll burn them. Oh. What are they? Poems. The dead boy wrote. I hurt him the way you would like to hurt me, but you can't. I'm not young and vulnerable anymore. My young husband was. Never mind about that. What do you mean, saying about the burn? -off? I'm sorry. I must have lost my head for a moment. Everyone has something that he won't let others touch because of their intimate nature. Ambler and Ambler. What's Ambler and Ambler? A firm that made loans on the place. 
Oh, so it was lost on the morning. That must have been what happened. I don't want no ifs, ands, or buts. Where are the rest of the papers? There are thousands of papers stretching back over hundreds of years, affecting Belle Reeve. As piece by piece, our improvident grandfathers and father and uncles and brothers exchanged the lands for their epic fornications. To put it plainly, the four-letter word deprived us of our plantation until finally all that was left, and, and Stella can verify that, was the house itself. About 20 acres of grounds, including the graveyard, to now all but which Stella and I have retreated. Here they all are. All the papers. I shall write them down, you with them. Take them. Peruse them. Oh, commit them to memory, even. I find it wonderfully fitting that Belle Reeve should finally be this old bunch of papers in your big, capable hands. I got a lawyer acquaintance will study these out. Well, present them to him with a box of aspirin tablets. <laughs> you see, uh, under the Napoleonic Code, a man has to take an interest in his wife's affairs. Especially now that Stella's gonna have a baby. What? Stella's gonna have a baby? I didn't know she was gonna have a baby. Stella? Oh, oh, Stella the star! Oh, how lovely to have a baby! Oh, uh, oh it's all right, everything's all right. I I'm sorry he did that to you. I guess he's just not the type that goes in for jasmine perfume. But maybe he's what we need to mix our blood with now that we've lost Belle Reeve. We thrashed it out. I'm feeling a little shaky, but I think I handled it nicely. I laughed and treated it all as a joke. Yes, I called him a little boy, and I laughed and flirted. I was flirting with your husband. <laughs> oh, look, the guests. They're gathering for the poker party. Hi, Estelle. Which way do we go now, Stella, this way? No. This way. Oh, the blind are leading the blind. <laughs> red hots, get your red hots. What time is it? What the hell difference does it make? He won't quit till he wins the pot. Anything wild in this deal? One eye jacks are wild. How many cards did you take? Two. Anybody want a shot? Yeah, me. Hey, why don't someone go down to China Sky and get a load of fried rice? Oh, so when I'm losing, you want to eat? Hey, get it off the table, Mitch. Nothing belongs on the table but cards, cash, and whiskey. Kind of on your high horse, ain't you? Well, I ought to head home pretty soon. Shut up. I got a sick mother at home. She don't go to sleep until I get in at night. Oh, then why don't you just stay home with her? She says to go out, so I go, but... I never enjoy it. All the while, I keep wondering how she is. Oh, for Christ's sake. Will you just go home, then? You all are married. But I'll be alone when she goes. I'm going to the bathroom. Hurry back. We'll fix you a sugar tip. Oh, lay off. Yeah, what have you got? I got a spade flush. <laughs> all right, boys. This game's seven card stuck. So this old farmer sitting around the back of the house throwing corn to the chickens. When all at once he hears a loud cackle, and this young hen comes with me split around the side of the house, the rooster right behind it, hand on fast. Just steal the cards. <laughs> well, as soon as the rooster catches sight of the farmer throwing corn, he puts on the brakes, lets the hen get away, starts pecking corn. And the old farmer says, Lord God, I hope I never gets that hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 I see you boys are still at it. Where are you 
you back. Blanche and I took it a show. Oh, Blanche, this is Mr. Hubble and Mr. Gonzalez. Hiya. Please, don't get up. Nobody's gonna get up, so don't get worried. How much longer is this game gonna continue? Till we get ready to quit. Poker is so fascinating. Could I give it? You may not. Excuse me. Sir, why don't you let him go up to Unison? Because it's nearly 2.30. Couldn't you call it quits after one more hand? <laughs> That's no fun, Stan. Oh. <laughs> Makes me so mad when he does that in front of people. Oh, I think I will bathe again. My nerves are in knots. Is the bathroom occupied? I don't know. Oh. oh, good evening. Hello. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, Blanche. This is, this is Harold Mitchell. Mitch, my sister, Blanche Dubois. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Dubois? <laughs> How's your mother, Mitch? About the same, thanks. She really appreciated your sending over that custard. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one seems superior to the others. Oh. Yes, he is. I thought he had sort of a sensitive look. Oh, well, his mother is sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, is he married? No. Well, is he a wolf? Why, Blanche? No, I don't think he would be. What, what does he do? He works on the precision bench with the plant that Stanley travels for. Well, is that something much? No. Stanley's the only one of his crowd that's likely to get anywhere. <laughs> what makes you think Stanley will? Just look at him. Oh, I've looked at him. <laughs> then you should know. Well, I'm sorry, but I have not noticed the stamp of genius on Stanley's forehead. <laughs> well, it's not genius. And it's not on his forehead. <laughs> what is it and where? I would like to know. It's a drive he has. Blanche, she's standing in the light. Oh, gracious, am I? <laughs> you should see their wives. I can imagine. <laughs> Big beefy things, I suppose. <laughs> you know the one upstairs? Oh, that horror. <laughs> well, the other night, <laughs> the plaster cracked. <laughs> Will you hands cut out that conversation in there? <laughs> you can't hear us. You can hear me. I said to hush up. Look, this is my house, and I'll talk as much as I want to. Stella, don't make a roll. Oh, he's half drunk. All right, bitch, are you in or what? I'll be out. What? Oh, no, I'm out. Hey, who turned that on in there? I did, do you mind? Turn it off. I'll let the girls have their music. Hey, show up, Stella. That's good. Leave it on. Sounds like Leonard Skinner. Stanley. I didn't hear your name. Hey, didn't I name it, bitch? I wasn't listening. <laughs> what are you doing then? I was looking through them drapes. <laughs> All right, now do the handover again or let's quit. Some people get ants when they play. Hey, sit down, Mitch. Feel me up. I'm going to the head. Sure, he's got ants now. Sending $20 bills in his pants up. Pulled it on as tight as spit wads. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll be down at the cashier's window getting him changing the quarters. When he goes home, they'll deposit him one by one in a piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, this game is spit in the ocean. Yes. Hello. Oh, hello. Excuse me. Oh, the little boys' room is busy right now. We've been drinking beer. Oh, I hate beer. It's a hot water drink. No, I don't think so. It always makes me warmer. <laughs> Have you got any cigs? Sure. What kind? Lucky's. So oh, good. What a pretty case. Silver? Yes, yes. Read the inscription. Oh, is there an inscription? I, I can't quite make it out. Oh. <laughs> and if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. 
<laughs> Why? That's from my favorite sonnet by Mrs. Browning. You know it? I certainly do. There's a story connected with that inscription. Sounds like a romance. A pretty sad one. The girl is dead now. Oh. She knew she was dying when she gave me this. Uh, very strange girl. Very sweet. Very. She must have been very fond of you. Sick people have such deep, sincere attachments. You're right. They certainly do. Sorrow makes for sincerity, I think. It certainly brings it out of people. The little there is belongs to people that have known some sorrow. I believe you're right about that. I'm positive that I am. Show me a person who hasn't known sorrow, and I'll show you a superficial person. <laughs> Listen to me. My tongue's a little thick, and you boys are responsible for it. The show let out at 11, and we couldn't come home on account of the poker game. So we had to go somewhere and drink. I'm not accustomed to having more than one drink. <laughs> yeah. Two is my limit. <laughs> three. Oh, tonight I had three. Hey, Mitch! Deal me out. I'm talking to this, uh... Dubois. Dubois. It's a French name. It means woods. And Blanche means white. So the two together mean white woods. Like an orchard in spring. You can remember it by that if you care to. You're French. We are French by extraction. Our first American ancestors were French Huguenots. You're Stella's sister, are you not? Yes. Stella is my precious little sister. I call her that in spite of the fact that she's somewhat older than I. Oh. <laughs> Just a little, less than a year. Uh-huh. Uh, would you do something for me? Yeah, certainly. What? I bought this adorable little colored paper lantern at a Chinese shop on Bourbon. Put it over the light bulb, would you please? We'd be glad to. I can't stand a naked light bulb any more than I can a rude remark or a vulgar action. I guess we strike you as being a, a pretty rough bunch. Oh, I'm very adaptable to circumstances. Well, that's a good thing to be. You're uh, visiting Stanley Estella? Yes. Stella hasn't been well lately, so I came down to help her out for a while. She's very run down. You're not, um... Oh, married? No, I'm an old maid school teacher. Well, you may teach school, but you're certainly not an old maid. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your gallantry. <laughs> so you're in the teaching profession? Yes, yes. Grade school, high school... <laughs> Yeah? Yeah? 
play in house with women. What's the matter? What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. He just blew your top. Hey, what? Hey, what? Hey, it's okay. Hey, Come on, man. Get a wet towel on. Hey, 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 coffee would do him good now. Now let's get him some cold water. Put him on yeah. the shower and get plenty of cold water on him. Get him the He should have left a nice one. He don't deserve to. He don't have freedom. Put plenty of cold water on him.
Texas. Texas is literally spouting gold into his pocket. Oh, my, my. You know how indifferent I am to money. I only think about money in terms of what it does for you. But he could do it. Oh, he could certainly do it. Do what, Lynch? What? Set us up in a shop. What kind of shop? I don't know. A shop of some kind. He could do it with half what his wife throws away at the races. So he's married. Uh, honey, would I be here if the man were married? <laughs> I'm going to call him. You have his phone number. Give me a pencil. Have <laughs> a slip of paper. I want to write it down first. Message, I mean. <laughs> Darling Shep, sister and I in desperate situation. I beg your pardon? Sister and I in desperate situation. We'll explain details later. Would you be interested in... Would you be interested in... You never get anywhere with direct appeals. <laughs> Darling, don't I'll be so... Something. I've got to think of something. Don't! Don't laugh at me, Stella! Oh, please, please don't laugh at me! I want you to take a look at the contents of my purse. Here's what's in it. 65 measly cents and coin of the realm. Stanley doesn't give me a regular allowance. He, he likes to pay bills himself, but this morning, to smooth things over, he gave me $80. Here, you take half and I'll keep the rest. No, oh no, Stella. I know how it helps you around. Well, to have a look at my No, thank you, I will take to the streets. Now talk, sis. How did you happen to get so low on funds? Money goes, it just goes places. <laughs> Sometimes I've got to get myself a hold of an alka sir. Oh, I'll fix you one now. No, not now, I've got to keep thinking. I do wish you would let things go. At least for a little while. Stella, I can't live with him. You can, he's your husband. But how can I stay here after what happened last night with just these curtains between us? You saw him at his worst last night. On the contrary, I saw him at his best. What such a man has to offer is animal force, and he gave a wonderful exhibition of that. But the only way to live with such a man is to go to bed with him, and that is your job, not mine. <laughs> Once you've rested a little, you'll see. It's all going to work out. You don't have to worry about anything while you're here. I mean, uh, expenses. Stella, I have a plan for us both, to get us both out. I wish you would stop taking it for granted that I am in something I want to get out of. Oh, I take it for granted that you still have sufficient memory of Belle Reeve to find this place and these poker players impossible to live with. Then you are taking entirely too much for granted. I can't believe you're in earnest. No. I understand how it happened. A little. You saw him in uniform, an officer. Not here, but... I don't think it would have made any difference where I saw him. Don't tell me it was one of those mysterious electric things between people. If you do, I will laugh in your face. I'm not going to say anything more about it. Oh, all right, then don't. But there are things that happen in the dark between a man and a woman that make everything else seem unimportant. What you're talking about is brutal desire. And just desire. The name of that rattle trap streetcar that bangs through the quarter, up one old narrow street and down another. Haven't you ever 
ridden on the streetcar. It brought me here to where I'm not wanted and where I am ashamed to be. Well, then don't you think your superior attitude is a bit out of place? I am not being or feeling at all superior, Stella. Believe me, I'm not. It's just this. This is the way I look at it. That kind of a man is the kind you go out with once, twice, oh, three times if the devil's in you, but live with, have a child by. I have told you I love him. And I tremble for you. I just tremble for you. Well, I can't help your trembling if you insist on trembling. May I speak plainly? Yes. Do, Blanche. As plainly as you want to.
darling ship. I'm spending the summer on the wing, making little flying visits here and there. Perhaps I should take up a sudden notion to swoop down on Dallas. How would you feel about that? Forewarned is forearmed, as they say. How does that sound? <coughs> mm -hmm. Most of my sister's friends go north in the summer, but some have homes on the Gulf. And there's been a continued round of entertainments, teas, cocktails, luncheons. I know about you and that blonde. That's a goddamn lie. You ain't pulling the wall over my eyes. I've seen you. Sounds You're like you around that mountain. Do that with other girls because I love you. 
Now you're fatty. Oh, get off of me. Thank <laughs> you. 